everybody and welcome back welcome back welcome back to the channel so many of you have shared uh, this with me uh, y'all know that this is my kind of topic right here uh, where the true identity of the biblical Israelites is being confirmed yet again uh, for many of us it comes as no surprise at all it's just very important that the world continues to see the unveiling of the truth. The world has to keep seeing this because so many lies have been put forth into the world. Um, as we stated in the Whited Out documentary, uh, part one, uh, what they did was they made a conscious effort to flood the world. Flood the world flood the world with historical information from a European perspective only, okay? And in doing that, European perspective basically means uh, we are going to rewrite history. We're not gonna tell you the truth. What we uncovered, we, we're gonna cover it up. <laughs> we, we don't want the world uh, to see what we saw. Hmm? So there's been this massive effort to uncover what has been covered over. So thank you to those of you who shared this with me. I believe our son, Aliyah, is one of the first to share this with us. Um, it's actually been some time since he shared it with us. Uh, we've just seen uh, so many people sharing it that I decided to go ahead and uh, chime in on this. Okay. Um, my apologies if my mic sounds low, but I have it. Okay, I just turned it up. My apologies for that. I hope you can hear me better now. Um, I'm going to dive right into this topic, beloveds. Um, many of you have already seen these images. They This is not the first time they've been revealed. But um, what's going on is I think there's a lot of excitement over the fact that you have... Um, a world leader, a major world leader, who is acknowledging the truth. These Western nations, uh, they will take the truth to the grave if they have to. But Vladimir Putin is saying, nah, uh, uh, your secret is out. Your secret is out. So before I dive into this, of course, uh, many of you are probably already uh, familiar with the scripture that talks about uh, how uh, the heathen was going to do some changing. Okay? And so I want to just share that with you real quick. Uh, that is in the book of Maccabees, 1 Maccabees 3 and 8. Okay? Let me just share that with you real quick so you can understand why images um, are not being shown the way they're supposed to be shown because folk don't want the truth out. First Maccabees chapter 3 verse 48 says, And laid open the book of the law wherein the heathen had sought to paint the likeness of their images. They wanted to paint the likeness of their images. They didn't want you to see the likeness of the real images. Okay? They wanted to change things a bit. Hmm? That is what happened. They wanted to make things look like them. They don't want you to know the truth. Because if you know the truth, then it makes them look bad. It, may, it, it reveals who they are. Because they told us the first people on the planet look like them. Uh, they told us that everybody after looked like them. And that we are some chance happening uh, that stumbled out of the jungles, some monkeys that they civilized, right? I mean, they, they put all kinds of things out there, right? Anyway, the truth is just coming forward so fast like a wildfire that can not and will not be contained. So anyway, 
I want to show you first um, this is some type of translation of uh, something that people are saying Putin said uh, despite that the news is out and I don't see any major outlets covering this at all not surprised but um, anyway take a look and a listen at this and of course you know I'll be right back ladies and gentlemen people of Russia today we stand on the precipice of a monumental revolution a moment that redefines Todos not only our understanding of history but also the path forward for our great nation. In an extraordinary discovery hidden beneath centuries of lore and legend, we have opened what can only be described as the oldest vault known to mankind. What we found within its ancient confines challenges the very fabric of our beliefs and heralds a new dawn for our country. Within this vault, we discovered figures of bi biblical proportions, characters that many have read about, debated, and revered. These figures, preserved against the sands of time, reveal a truth that is as profound as it is transformative. They are all black. This revelation, this undeniable truth, stands before us not as a contradiction to our faith, but as a testament to the diversity and unity that faith embodies. As your president, I see this moment not as a challenge to our beliefs, but as an opportunity to embrace a wider, more inclusive understanding of our history and spirituality. Russia, in its rich tapestry of cultures, traditions and people, is uniquely positioned to lead the world into this new era of understanding and acceptance. From this day forward, let us proclaim our nation under the guidance of black Jesus, a figure who represents not just the cornerstone of Christian faith, but also a symbol of the universal values of love, compassion, and brotherhood. This black Jesus, whose likeness and history have been unveiled from the oldest vault, is a message to us all that divinity knows no color, that spiritual truth transcends race, and that our common humanity binds us more tightly than our differences divide us. Let this discovery remind us that history is not just the story of those who wield power, but also of those whose contributions have been overlooked or forgotten. It challenges us to re-examine what we know, to question our assumptions, and to open our hearts to the broader possibilities of understanding and faith. As we embark on this journey of discovery and understanding, let us do so with open minds and compassionate hearts. Let us build a nation that truly reflects the teachings of Black Jesus, a nation that stands for justice, equality, and love for all, regardless of race or creed. Okay, so we all know that there has been a conscious and a deliberate glossing over hiding of history. Uh, they've revised things, they've altered things, they've changed things, they covered things, buried things, and just flat out deceived the whole world. And then if you even hint at the truth, if you bring even one iota of the truth forward, what you get it's a bunch of gaslighting and a bunch of people saying, what difference does it make? Now, if it didn't make a difference, why on earth did you take the time to repaint images and lighten the images? Now, there was narratives put out that uh, some of these images darkened over time, even with these Russian images. And it was brought out, they say, well, if the facial and hand and leg and arm features of these people um, supposedly darkened over time why isn't it that other parts of the medium darkened as well see any lesson will do I'm sorry any lie will do for those who want to hide the truth any lie will do and they will continue to put it out there 
This is why it's very important that those who love the truth, those who care about the truth, that you flood the world with the truth. Again, just like we stated in the Whited Out documentary series in part one, uh, it was said that there was a conscious effort to flood the world with information that only came from a European perspective. And as Vladimir put, uh, Putin put out or mentioned, it's not fair that those who wield all the power control history. First of all, you can't even control history. History is something that has happened. History is something that has taken place. And so for anyone to feel that they have a right to change the narrative and present their version instead of the actual version, for anyone to feel that they have a right to mislead people, it is disgusting. It is disgusting. Now, Baby One in the chat says that they have this book with the Russian icons, and some of these pics are in there. And they had to pay $1,300 for a used book. And they're glad that they bought it. See, that's what they do. When they want to hide something, they, they up that price. It's not that um, they can't get it any cheaper. They raise that price because they want to hide the truth. Now, my husband shared with you all many years ago on our other channel that one of his older brothers um, used to go to the Detroit Public Library, which is a massive library um, in Detroit. And uh, he would try to uh, check out certain books, uh, the Book of Enoch and the certain other books. And the clerks would always try to say, oh, no, it's not in. That book's not in. Nope, not in. It's not in. Right? And so he decided, uh, my brother-in-law decided to go over some folks' head. Because he said, according to your information, the book is in. But you keep telling me it is not in. So he went over some folks' heads. And he finally was able to get the books he was looking for. And the information he uncovered at the time was amazing to him. And that brought on the understanding that that is the reason. That was one of the major reasons why they wanted to hide the truth. Because they were hiding the books. They wanted to hide the truth. This is why they hide the books. Because the truth, the truth is in those books. There was an article that I was reading earlier, and I may want to talk about it um, at a later time, but even in this article that I was reading earlier, it says, why is America afraid of black history? See, get this. America is not only afraid of black history, America, but the world is afraid of black history, not just America. America is just willing to make laws and do, I mean, they're doing things that I haven't seen other countries do, even though they are all confederate one with another to hide the truth. But the most high, I believe, is moving on people. I believe that uh, he is moving on those who are coming forward with the truth. I believe that he is moving on these people to reveal the truth, to speak the truth. It goes far beyond Vladimir Putin. There have been others before him as well who have brought forth the truth. Hmm? Very, very soon, we are going to see some things that will blow the world's mind. I've often said that world history is black history. But, as I stated in an earlier video, the revealing of the truth is also the revealing of the man of sin. Someone asked me um, in the comment section, section uh, who is the man of sin? I think with the context of what I'm saying, you should be able to determine 
um, the man of sin is definitely, it's not just a single man. See, some believe it's a single man. I don't. The single man is antichrist in nature. I'm sorry, the, I'm sorry, the man of sin is antichrist in nature. And antichrist doesn't just have to mean a person who is against the Messiah. But it can also mean a person who is against the truth. Because Yahushua is the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes unto the Father but by him. Right? So even if you reject the truth, you are anti-Christ. You could be sitting all up in your Christian, Christian church and still be anti-Christ. Let me say that again for the people in the back. You can be sitting all up in your Christian church and still be anti-Christ. The anti-Christ is the man of sin. Those who don't have a love for the truth is the man of sin. Um, somebody, all of y'all, take a look at what Critical Thinker is saying in the chat. I think I've seen you before, Critical Thinker, who came right and said what I had on my mind. <laughs> See, some things I don't like to speak out openly because, you know, YouTube and their algorithms and certain things, it's a shame that you have to censor because folk will say that you are H-A-T-E-F-U-L if you say certain things. But look at what Critical Thinker said there. The man of sin the Antichrist. I might do a whole other video on the fact that you can be a Christian and still be Antichrist. Thank you, Alexander, for the super chat. I appreciate it. You can be a Christian and still be Antichrist. Ain't that something? That was a curveball that I wanted to just throw out there. To let you all know that anyone who rejects the truth, because Yahusha, the one who the world calls Jesus, he is the truth. And so if you reject the truth, by default, you are anti-Christ. You are anti-Christ. Hmm. Wow. So, that being said, the man of sin is being revealed at the same time the truth is being revealed. Hmm. Huh? One moment here. Okay, so the man of sin is responsible for putting all these lies out here to begin with. And they have the whole world believing one thing, but there's a whole other thing going on. But the Most High is allowing the truth to spring forward. In so many ways, even through someone like Vladimir Putin. He's saying, your secret is out. I am opening up the Russian vaults. And I am going to tell the people what I know. And what I know is that the images that you have put out are not correct. Hmm? Huh? They are not correct. You have lied to the world and I, Vladimir Putin have opened the vaults and I'm going to let your secret out to the bag. The secret is out. The truth is springing forth like a flood. The truth cannot be hidden any longer. It is like a wildfire that cannot and will not be contained. Now with this truth, there's going to be a lot of resistance as we always see. I recently did a video, uh, the women of the Bible, uh, I think it was the first one that I did. And of course, uh, there was some resistance. Uh, someone called the black images that we showed as the people of the Bible. Someone came and said that this was utter BS. Because the truth was too difficult for them to accept or handle. So they called it utter BS. So that's the kind of pushback you're going to get. You're going to have people who are going to reject the truth. Because the truth 
is too hard to deal with. These images, like I've said before, have been shown before. This is not the first time. But to have a major world figure who is non-melanated to come out and say, this right here is the truth and what you've been believing is a lie. Let me see this comment right here. Simply Redeemed in the chat says, there are Christians who say they love God but hate and don't accept the black people who were also created in the image of God. You say you serve. Um, I talked about that on my channel before. There was an old woman named Margaret. This is years ago uh, when YouTube had it differently where a person can just come on your channel, um, not on a particular video, but on your channel. It used to be where people could just uh, plop down a comment on your channel and say whatever they wanted to. So I remember this woman, this old woman named Margaret. Uh, she put a comment on my channel. She says that she loves Jesus but she hates black people. And so I, I just basically went in to Margaret and I said, you're going to have a hard time trying to explain that one because according to the Bible, Yahushua, the one who the world calls Jesus, is a black man, so-called black man. And he says, if you despise my people, you despise me, Margaret. So how can you sit here and say you love me, but you don't like my people? See, that's the problem. A lot of people in this world think and believe that they can do us however they want to do. Despite the fact of what biblical prophecy says, of course, we know that the Most High says he was going to um, unleash terror on us as a form of punishment because we disobeyed his law, statutes, and commandments. He said he was going to turn his back on us. But he says those who were willing participants, those who did this and forwarded the affliction and took things too far, they think that ain't nothing going to come of that. But they ain't seen nothing yet. They think that they can lay their hands on the apple of my eye. And that I ain't going to do nothing? So, again, I told Margaret, who put that comment on my channel, what the Bible says. He said, Yahushua, the one who the world called Jesus. He said, if you despise my people you despise me and that is what's going to get a lot of folk in trouble because they are having a difficult time even having an ounce of love or compassion for us they sit up in their churches they sing their little hymns right they quote their little bible scriptures they hear their little 15-minute sermon. They have their little meetings and gatherings and little talk sessions after their little sermon is preached. They have a word with the other parishioners for just a moment. And then they return home and they eat their jelly beans. And they think that that is all the Most High requires for them to enter into the kingdom of heaven. They can sit up there with all that H-A-T-E for the children of Yah and believe within their hearts that he is going to overlook all of that. It really seems like the world believes that the Most High is stupid. You got to be out of your mind if you think that your only requirement is that you take your behind to some church on Sunday and spend 30 minutes singing and listening, listening to a little sermon once a week for some only twice a year and you honestly believe that that's going to pay the price for all of the wickedness that have happened in history. Mm, mm, mm. You got to be out of your mind. I guess there's a lot of people out of their minds then because that's what they think. 
uh, Mr. Lawrence in the chat says Christianity is insanity. That's what it sounds like to me when you when you consider that people think and believe that they can do whatever they want. All this wickedness, all this rotten, dirty, low down stuff, and that the God of heaven, as the world calls him, is so stupid that he's going to allow you to just walk into the into the pearly gates, traipse around on the streets of gold not having repented or changed anything about your life, but eternal life is waiting for you on the other side. Mm, mm, mm. Well, just like the Most High said, he said he was going to send a strong delusion, didn't he? Didn't he say he was going to send it? Christianity is a part of that strong delusion. Most High said he sent it. Why did he send it? He said because folk have not a love for the truth. But they have pleasure in unrighteousness. They know it's unrighteous to treat our people the way that they treat us and that they have treated us. They know it's unrighteous, but they have pleasure in it. Do y'all hear what I'm saying? And of course, I know that that could be. But when you have a group of people who literally think that they're going to walk around the streets of gold having pleasure in unrighteousness, forwarding the affliction on the house of Yashrael, doing the things that they did to us on those plantations, how they treated the men, women, and children. You honestly think that the only thing that is required of you, O daughter of Babylon, is that you eat your cheese sandwich after Sunday service. Mm, mm, mm. I thank the Most High for the truth that is being revealed. I thank Him for all that is happening. The Bible says, in everything give thanks. It is my hope, however, that with the revealing of all of this truth, even the revealing of the man of sin, it is my hope and my desire that our people would repent. Hmm? We have to repent. And turn from our wicked ways. Because we know that the Bible says. If my people which are called by my name. Would humble themselves. And pray. And seek the most High's face. Then will he hear from heaven. Forgive their sin. And heal their land. So I, I definitely want our people to repent. But at the same time. Guess what we have to do. We got to put that truth out there as often as we can. Hmm? As often as we can. I don't care who's bringing it. You can have a jackass bringing the truth. I will hand him the mic. Do you hear what I'm saying? I will hand him the mic. Because I feel like this revelation, this revealing is something so major so major that is definitely turning some heads and of course is causing some folk to be very uncomfortable well I think it's time that some folk get uncomfortable I think it's time we've been uncomfortable for a long time those who can't handle the truth or accept the truth it's time for them to be uncomfortable now now, if you are a person who can accept and handle the truth, then the truth should not make you uncomfortable. Hmm? But if you can't handle the truth, if you just absolutely have to have a God, mm, mm, mm. you absolutely have to have a God that looks like you, then that is your problem. Mm, mm, mm. And that's what's going on because I know for many of us, so-called black people, I know many of us, guess what? We didn't care what color he was. We just didn't. Hmm? But guess what? Many of these other people, they don't want it no other way. If they can't have a God looking like them, they don't want it any other way. Now, I want to acknowledge something that I saw, and I mentioned something about this early on. 
about the uh, the, tr the video that was uh, shared in the beginning. Now, a lot of information has come out about Vladimir Putin opening up the vaults. That speech that someone shared with me, I just wanted to share that because of the words. Now, I can tell that that was an old video perhaps, but the words still rang true, so I wanted to share it anyway. A number of people shared that with me. A number of people shared the images with me. The images have been shared over the years already by a number of different people, right? But I wanted to share it anyway because it does coincide with the facts of the images that have been covered over. These images have been hidden and they've been explained away. I even found an article or saw an article where they were trying, someone was trying to explain why the images were so dark. And it kind of reminds me of a website that I saw many years ago. We talked about it in White It Out Part 1. Hmm? In White It Out Part 1, I talked about a, a website where there was an individual, it was a white woman, who was trying to explain the images on the walls of the tombs in Egypt. And her explanation as to why the images of the ancient Egyptians were black was that they turned black over time. She said they turned black over time. And I said to myself, there are so many images that still have white for the garments or lighter colors for the background or from, from any relic that may have been in the image. So you're telling me that only the facial structure in the hands and all of that turned dark over time, but all of that other white or light stuff stayed white or light? So it showed me that there, that was a shameful effort to try to explain away the truth. The truth is what it is, and folk don't like it. It's too difficult for them to accept. So they, so they will simply say that the images of ancient Egyptians darkened over time. And some of those people are I'm going to say, like my mom used to say, blacker than an ace of spade. But you want to convince the world that they were actually so-called white people? Huh? And the images just turned that, that dark over time? Oh my goodness. It can get very exhausting trying to reveal the truth, but it is a worthwhile effort to do so. Because as I said earlier in this broadcast, and as we stated in White It Out Part 1, the documentary series, that the heathen decided to flood the world with all of these lies. They flooded the whole world, and now the truth is being revealed more and more. More and more. You literally have people who live in regions of the world, such as Egypt, who will sit there and look at the images on the wall and they won't believe the evidence of their own eyes. They won't believe it. They refuse to believe it. You have an image of King Tut, clearly a black child, an Egyptian, a descendant of Mitzrayim, a descendant of Ham. When they do their remake, they make the image of a white King Tut with blue eyes. And they tell you that he is of European stock. So we're supposed to forget what his father looked like what his grandmother, King, Queen Ty, looks like. We were supposed to forget all of that. And it just really boggles the mind. It blows the mind how people can just lie and lie and lie. So I want to show you all an image of Queen Ty. To show you all that image. 
real quickly here. Just give me one moment. Image of Queen Ty. Take a look at this. So Queen Ty is right there. But they insist that she wasn't a black woman. Oh my goodness. That's her right there. That's Queen Ty. But they did a facial reconstruction and they gave a white woman because the truth is just too much. Queen Ty is, Qu is King Tut's grandmother. Mm, mm, mm. Do y'all see what I'm saying? The truth, they just can't deal with it. And because they can't deal with the truth, they present lies. They flood the world with lies. That's right, uh, Ab Abihu Ben Yisrael says, that explains why Ish cannot accept um, Yahusha, the one who the world calls Jesus. That's right, Kenya in the chat says, they say the queen tie was tan. Oh my goodness. Sometimes the lies are laughable. It is it's ridiculous. But it's not funny. Laughable, but not funny. Let me tell you all something. The revealing of truth. Let me go, go in another direction now. I spoke on this earlier. But the revealing of truth. Not just the identity of the people of the Bible. Of the first people on the planet. Adam and Eve. Couldn't have been anything other than so-called black people. The first people on earth had to be. Even scientists says that. But you have Christians who refuse to believe the truth. But with the revealing of truth, the man of sin is also being revealed. Because the man of sin is someone who does not accept the truth. The truth is too difficult for them. It's a hard pill to swallow. And so therefore they reject the truth. They reject the knowledge of the truth. And part, thank you uh, Celest Celestia Deans, says candy land Christianity. That's exactly what it is. Christianity is candy land. They don't want nothing. Uh, Derek in the chat says the bubble of their lies is bursting. That's what's happening. The truth has to come out. It is time. Okay. It's time for the truth to be revealed. And so I'm so grateful to the Most High that the truth is happening. It is springing forth. Okay. These images, let me bring that back up for you, for you guys, those of you who didn't see some of these images. But these images represent something that is more realistic and true. And as I pointed out in the book of Maccabees, part of their deception was to paint the likeness of their images. Because the likeness of our images was too much for them to bear. They could not handle looking at the likeness of our images. But guess what, y'all? The Most High, God of Heaven, as the world calls Him, He was in on it. He said He was going to send that strong delusion so that they could believe a lie. If you really think about that, He says, I'm going to let you wallow in your own delusion. If this is what you want, He said, I'm going to make it strong for you. Since you don't want the truth, I'm going to send a strong one for you. And you're going to be captivated by your own lies. I'm going to help you along the way. I'm going to make it strong. A strong delusion. So you can believe a lie. Because you had not a love for the truth, but pleasure in unrighteousness. It is very important to know the identity of the people of the Most High. It's very important. People can say all day long that it doesn't matter, but yes, it does. It does matter. The truth does matter. And I thank the Most High for this massive reveal. This is yet another confirmation. This is not the confirmation, but another, because so many have been putting this truth out for years and years and years and years, and now it is springing forth like a flood. Todaya. 
I'm happy about the truth. Thank you all for your time. Thank you for joining me. Until the next live or the next video, I want you all to stay prayed up. Let's pray that this truth keeps on coming out like a flood. Hallelujah. Why are we so happy about this? Because so many lies have been taught. And you literally have people sitting back trying to tell us that it don't matter. You telling us it don't matter while you are flooding the world with your packs and packs and stacks and stacks and mountains of lies. You telling us it don't matter. Yes, it does. Our history does matter. This is our history and it does matter. And you don't have a right to tell us that it don't matter. For us, it does. It might not matter to you, but it matters to us. It matters to our children. It matters to the next generation. Now, as I said before, with this revealing of the truth, I hope and I pray that our people can begin to repent and return back unto our Father. Repent and turn from our wicked ways. Because once we begin to cry out and repent to our Father, this world knows that it's all over. They know it's all over. Love you, family. Uh, those of you of the house of Yasher El and those of you who are Gentiles grafted in, I love you. Thank you for your time. Until the next video, stay prayed up. We hope you liked today's topic. Please leave your comments below. If you haven't already, subscribe to the channel, share and like this video. And with that, we're out. Be sure to ring the bell to be notified of new uploads on this channel. And also, comment, share, like, and subscribe.